Hello and welcome back to another episode of XCOM 2 Guides. My name is Saiken and today we're going to take a closer look at the optimal squad composition. This video is aimed uh, to give you a detailed overview about four different squads that I regularly use, their advantages and disadvantages, and ultimately the question what the best squad in XCOM 2 is going to look like. So without further ado, let's prepare for the four main squads squad number one would be a fully loaded endgame squad that i am regularly using potentially the strongest amongst uh, the four and the most versatile the way that i like to build this squad is as following okay so composition number one under the assumption that you do have limited time in a normal campaign play legendary iron man this is the strongest squad that I would recommend uh, using. It contains uh, two Psy Operatives, a Specialist, a Sniper, a Ranger, and a Grenadier. The advantage of this squad is it's really a high-powered composition for the endgame. It definitely has the strongest crowd control and versatility of all of the compositions that I'm going to go through with two mind controls, two time stasis, one time haywire protocol, a frost grenade, a serpent suit, and so on and so forth. The number of controls that you can exceed to with this squad is almost unmatched. It is actually unmatched. Two action economy manipulations on top of that with both of the Psy operatives and you potentially at the late game have bonds on top of it. You do have the sniper and the ranger for fantastic sustainable DPS. Additionally, you do have cleaner potential, the reaper, as well as Serial, Death from Above, um, so Reaper as an ability, Reaper not as the class. All of uh, these abilities allow you to continuously clean up uh, highly damaged enemies. Fanfire and um, Face Off from the Sniper would easily qualify for that as well. Great Action Economy, Salvo, uh, as well as Aid Protocol, Stasis, Death from Above, Scanning Protocol, and so on and so on. The list is pretty long, so this team here could easily take on two, three, maybe even four packs at a time with the right equipment. You're using the Grenadier in the setup for cover removal. The way that I use to uh, equip those guys is essentially Go with war suits for both of uh, the Psy operatives if they are fully fledged out because with Fortress and their um, Mind Cleanse, they are not affected by any of uh, the status abilities in the entire game. They are effectively immune uh, to death by having sustenance on top of it. So you can go all out with blaster uh, bombs or shredder cannons as well as blue screen rounds. They are forced to be reckoned with and are really versatile around characters. The mind controls make it incredibly easy, almost trivializing most of the missions. I like to run my specialist with uh, the healing uh, skills. So med pack is in order. Sometimes skull check as a second, sometimes mimic beacon, just in case, you know, and really having the back of uh, the team in terms of extra armor the way that i usually distribute it is serpent suit for the sniper because they only need ammunition and the additional um, crowd control with the frost ray comes in handy the um, assault uh, could actually take the uh, icarus armor for super fast movement across the field so that makes it even more dangerous and I'm typically using the Rage suit for our Grenadier, just in case to get that extra heavy weapon and so on and so forth. A fully equipped team uses all of the chosen weapons, is greatly, greatly flexible, and by far the strongest force uh, that I've come across in XCOM 2. So if you want to use that, be my guest. Let's move on. Squad number two is what I would call the vanilla normal uh, balanced squad that I'm using in an everyday XCOM campaign. It has a little bit of everything and here is how I'm building it. The vanilla team or the second composition that I wanted to introduce consists out of Reaper, Templar and the four base classes. It is the standard composition and kind of exchanges the Psy Operators with two of the hero classes. The way that I 
like to play that is it's the safest and potentially kind of more versatile composition, which also allows both of the Psi operatives that you typically have in training to take their training safely without being interrupted. Keep in mind Psi operatives that you take on normal missions are essentially eating up experience that other troops could get otherwise. So this here could be your A-team during most of the missions except the very, very end. It offers a great flexibility and safety, which is really the key to solve most of the situations. It has a moderate crowd control component. Uh, still, the Haywire protocol is in there. You could use a frost bomb. You could have the frost ray, as well as a high tankiness from the Templar. The Templar himself could often use, use, be used as a mimic beacon with the ability to parry any attack in the game. You can focus on cleaning up the battlefield and then essentially just leave over that one Andromedon or that one Sectopod or that one Chosen and the Templar will take care of it. The way that I like to play this um, combination is I like to scout ahead with the Reaper and really make sure that I understand when and how to engage. That's what makes it so incredibly powerful. You effectively know the entire map and can react accordingly. It also has good burst potentially. A Reaper with remote start and banish is no uh, joke. It is a force to actually be reckoned with. And the versatility of the whole setup allows you to cleverly react to any enemy composition. With the Sniper and Blue Screen Rounds, you typically are all set for mechanical units. With Talon Rounds and a well-equipped uh, Ranger, you're typically well-equipped to deal with any form of Advent. And the Grenadier will remove most of the cover. On top of it, you do have kind of a solid backline with the Specialist for healing purpose in case that is needed. So I can highly recommend this team. I'm running it often and it is a fantastic combination. Squad number three has a different appeal than the other two. It very heavily relies on the ability to build sparks. It is one that had been inspired by my rise of the robots campaign and i found out it actually works quite well it is simply uh, simple to use and it is very effective in the way that it deals with most of the situation so here's how i am building squad number three okay so this one here is a bit of an inspired team composition from the rise of the robots campaign where I typically was running three sparks and was grinding through the campaign I found a happy medium in using two sparks, a Reaper, a Specialist, Sniper and Ranger, in order to effectively build a more rounded combination. I could use uh, that in the Rise of the Robots simply because the classes were not allowed, but after playing around with the sparks a little bit more, this combination is actually quite strong. So why is it that uh, strong? The sparks themselves can fill multiple roles and are usually fire support. They can heal one another, so as soon as you do have two, they multiply their ability a quite a bit more. And the idea of this team here might not be fully visible on the first glance, so hear me out. This team here can really effectively use Overwatch traps and use those to their advantage. So you will use the Reaper in order to figure out where the next pack is. Then it takes some practice to understand how far you can approach without being spotted out. That is important. You take your blue moves, you try to position the sparks in high ground, you try to position your sniper in high ground. And now the gr uh, grand idea of that combination is that you're effectively using Overwatch and due to uh, the squad side, essentially, or the kill zone, essentially, as soon as the enemies will move, the whole world will break loose and a lot of Overwatch shots will come through. And that works incredibly well. So well so that most of the Advent uh, packs are decimated and will stand no chance. So what do I mean with that? If you train your specialist with maybe some extra skills and give it a threat assessment plus the normal Overwatch, that means that there are two chains of Overwatches triggered the um, iteration here is chains, not just overwatches, because 
with covering fire on the one hand, every single action that the enemy does triggers Overwatch, and with Guardian on the other hand, a normal Overwatch becomes a chain because it allows for 50% extra chance to trigger additional Overwatches. It is not seldom that a threat assessed, um, then Overwatched specialist can trigger easily five, six um, Overwatch shots in a row. On top of that, you do have the Sniper with Kill Zone, which typically, depending on your uh, size of the magazine, could also be six additional Overwatch uh, shots. And both of the Sparks have Hunter as their ability, which means for every single triggered enemy, there is a certain chance that they trigger an Overwatch shot, typically 50%. And then on top of that, you can also Overwatch them. So that means if a pack of five enemies, Sector Port and four, comes in, the Sparks can theoretically shoot up to six times with that setup. The um, specialist with the guardian ability will likely end up shooting anywhere between three and six times. And the sniper will also shoot six times on top of it. You can kind of spice this up with a little bit extra claymores and proxim uh, proximity mines just for good flavor. And since you also have both of the sparks there, there's a lot of healing potential just with them, a lot of um, tankiness as well as with uh, overwatch uh, with overdrives in both of the sparks you do have a lot of burst potential run and gun from the um, as, from the ranger will just make that even better so long story short give that one a try it is actually a quite fun setup it has everything covered and the removal as well as shredding of uh, removal of cover and shredding of armor is also done by the sparks even without all of the overwatch shenanigans that i just shared with you this one here is a keeper and last but certainly not least squad number four which is a bit of an oddball i have been using this squad it's fun to play and it very much focuses on one central figure and a lot of action manipulation so here is how i built squad number four and finally, the oddball, a bit of a different take on a typical setup. I would recommend trying Ranger, Skirmisher, Psyops, Double Grenadier, and Specialist. So what does that odd combination actually offer? The idea here is to have one solo main carry, which is the Ranger, equip it with tail and rounds, potentially the chosen shotgun as well as uh, the chosen katana and make it your main damage dealer. The setup here works incredibly well because uh, the ranger, as long as it can deal a lot of uh, damage with the chosen weapon, will not incur any penalties for range. Uh, that is the special ability of the chosen shotgun. And all you need to do is basically set up the ranger. In order to do that, you're running two grenadiers both of these grenadiers can remove almost all of the cover that is in the way. You can um, load uh, with a war suit and uh, with the grenades four massive cover removals on each of them. They should never really run out. And with Salvo, you have plenty of options to just level the entire field as well as shred it. The ranger then can continue to essentially just evaporate everything and the way that you can do that is with the combination of hopefully getting death from above as a special ability therefore kind of um, triggering even further resets and on top of that um, rapid shot implacable and uh, topics like or skills like reaper allow both cleanup as well as kills and then um, uh, reposition and here's the kicker and that's why i put the skirmisher in here and also the psi operative both skirmisher and psi operative have really really solid abilities to shift uh, action economy towards the ranger so what is happening is as soon as the ranger no longer crits or for whatever reason doesn't really uh, trigger you can shift more actions uh, to it heck you could even give uh, the berserking um, uh, oil towards uh, the ranger and just let him completely enrage and shift actions uh, towards it with an upgraded uh, shotgun from the chosen 
uh, you should be able to dish out close to 20 damage per shot with the tail and rounds. If you have breakthroughs, that's even higher than that. So it's a very fun gameplay. You, it works incredibly well with the right equipment. It is high ongoing DPS. There is crowd control in here. The Psy Operator Defender Specialist can do all of that. There's a lot of explosive gameplay due to both of the Grenadiers. And in case you're running into enemies that are not easily critical, such as the uh, Sector Pod or the Mechs, they can typically be taken down by the skirmisher with blue screen rounds i wanted to specifically come up with a build around the skirmisher uh, that makes sense to also enable that class one of my ideas was to have each of the classes in one of the four builds so that con uh, that concludes our fourth build okay all good things eventually come to an end this is the end of our guide i hope you found a squad that is useful for your everyday play in the comment section below, tell me which is your favorite team composition or which of the four that I've presented is something that you'd like to try out. Take care and have a good one. Bye-bye, guys.